And now for the second half of Dinosaurs Before Dark by Mary Pope Osborne. The first book in the Magic Treehouse series. And it's test, AR test number 6311 if you want to take it when we're done. Remember that this is a read along, not a read aloud. Your job is to be reading the words with me. Chapter 6, Dinosaur Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was busy picking a flower from the magnolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion. But Annie wasn't paying attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, wow, she said. Annie! Clutching her magnolia flower, she took off down the hill. Annie, come back, Jack shouted. But Annie had disappeared. I'm going to kill her, Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion into his jeans pocket. Then he heard Annie shriek. Annie! Jack heard another sound as well, a deep bellowing sound, like a tuba. Jack, come here, Annie called. Annie! Jack grabbed his backpack and raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. The valley below was filled with nests. Big nests made out of mud, and the nests were filled with tiny dinosaurs. Annie was crouching next to one of the nests. And standing over her was a gigantic duck-billed dinosaur. Don't panic. Don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill toward Annie. The huge dinosaur was towering above Annie, waving her arms, making her tuba sound. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move toward me, slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand, crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her, still bellowing. Annie froze. Keep going, Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched farther down the hill until he was just an arm's distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, he said. He crouched next to her. Bow your head. Pretend to chew. Chew? Yes. I read that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. Soon, the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised his head. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. Thanks, Jack, for saving me, said Annie. You just have to use your brain, said Jack. You can't just go running to a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie! Too late. Annie held out her magnolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your babies, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly examined the babies. Some were crawling out of their nests. Where were the other mothers? Jack took a look at the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs. He read the caption. The Anatosauruses lived in colonies. While a few mothers babysat the nests, others hunted for food. So there must be more mothers close by. Hey, Jack! Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolias to the giant Anatosaurus. She's nice J too, Jack! She's nice too, Jack, Annie said. But suddenly, the Anatosaurus made it her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur barged down the hill. 
She seemed to be afraid of something. Jack put down the book on top of his pack. He hurried up to Annie. I wonder why she ran away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him throw up. An enormous, ugly monster was coming across the plain. He was walking on two big legs and swinging his long, thick tail and dangling two tiny arms. He had a huge head and his jaws were wide open. Even from this far away, Jack could see his long, gleaming teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex, whispered Jack. Chapter 7. Ready, set, go. Run, Annie, run, cried Jack, to the treehouse. They dashed down the hill together, through the tall grass, through the ferns, past the pterodon, and right to the rope ladder. They scrambled up. Seconds later, they tumbled into the treehouse. Annie leaped to the window. He's going away, she said, panting. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He looked through the window with her. The Tyrannosaurus was wandering off, but then the monster stopped and turned around. Duck, said Jack. The two of them hunched down. After a long moment, they raised their heads. They peeked out again. Coast clear, said Jack. Yay, whispered Annie. We have to get out of here, said Jack. You made a wish before, said Annie. I wish we could go back to Frog Creek, said Jack. Nothing happened. I wish... Wait, you were looking at a picture in the dinosaur book, remember? The dinosaur book. Jack groaned. Oh, no. I left the book in my pack on the hill. I have to go back. Oh, forget it, said Annie. I can't, said Jack. The book doesn't belong to us. Plus, my notebook's in my pack. With all my notes. Hurry, said Annie. Jack hurried down the rope ladder. He leaped to the ground. He raced past the pterodon, through the ferns, through the tall grass, and up the hill. He looked down. There was his pack lying on the ground. On top of it was the dinosaur book. But now the valley below was filled with anatosauruses, all standing guard around the nest. Where had they been? Did fear of the Tyrannosaurus send them home? Jack took a deep breath. Ready, set, go. He charged down the hill. He leaped to the backpack. He scooped it up. He grabbed the dinosaur book. A terrible tuba sound. Another. Another. All the anatosauruses were bellowing at him. Jack took off. He raced up to the hilltop. He started down the hill. He stopped. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was back, and he was standing between Jack and the treehouse. Chapter 8. A Giant Shadow Jack jumped behind the magnolia tree. His heart was beating so fast he could hardly think. He peeked out at the giant monster, the horrible-looking creature was opening and closing his huge jaws. His teeth were as big as steak knives. Don't panic. Think. Jack peered down at the valley. Good. The duck-billed dinosaurs were sticking close to their nests. Jack looked back at the Tyrannosaurus. Good. The monster still didn't seem to know he was there. Don't panic. Think. Think. Maybe there's information in the book. Jack opened the dinosaur book. He found Tyrannosaurus Rex. He read, Tyrannosaurus Rex was the largest meat-eating land animal of all time. If it were alive today, it would eat a human in one bite. Great. The book was no help at all. Okay. He couldn't hide on the other side of the hill. The Anatosauruses might stampede. Okay. He couldn't run to the treehouse. Tyrannosaurus might run faster. Okay, maybe he should just wait. Wait for the monster to leave. Jack peeked around the tree. 
the Tyrannosaurus had wandered closer to the hill. Something caught Jack's eye. Annie was coming down the rope ladder. Was she nuts? What was she doing? Jack watched Annie hop off the ladder. She went straight to the pterodon. She was talking to him. She was flapping her arms. She pointed at Jack, at the sky, at the treehouse. She was nuts. Go! Go back up the tree, Jack whispered. Go! Suddenly, Jack heard a roar. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was looking in his direction. Jack hit the ground. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was coming toward the hill. Jack felt the ground shaking. Should he run? Crawl back into Dinosaur Valley? Climb the magnolia tree? Just then, a giant shadow covered Jack. He looked up. The pterodon was gliding overhead. The giant creature sailed down toward the top of the hill. He was coming straight for Jack. Chapter 9, The Amazing Ride The pterodon coasted down to the ground. He stared at Jack with his bright, alert eyes. What was Jack supposed to do? Climb on? But I'm too heavy, thought Jack. Don't think. Just do it. Jack looked at the Tyrannosaurus. He was starting up the hill. His giant teeth were flashing in the sunlight. Okay, don't think. Just do it. Jack put his book in his backpack. Then he eased down onto the pterodon's back. He held on tightly. The creature moved forward. He spread out his wings and lifted off the ground. They teetered this way. Then that. Jack nearly fell off. The pterodon steadied himself, then rose into the sky. Jack looked down. The Tyrannosaurus was chomping the air and staring at him. The pterodon glided away. He sailed over the hilltop. He circled over the valley. All, over all the nests filled with babies. Over all the giant duck-billed dinosaurs. Then the pterodon soared out over the plain. Over the Triceratops, who was grazing in the high grass. It was amazing. It was a miracle. Jack felt like a bird, as light as a feather. The wind was rushing through his hair. The air smelled sweet and fresh. He whooped. He laughed. Jack couldn't believe it. He was riding on the back of an ancient flying reptile. The pterodon sailed over the stream, over the ferns and bushes. Then he carried Jack down to the base of the oak tree. When they came to a stop, Jack slid off the creature's back and landed on the ground. Then the pterodon took off again and glided into the sky. Bye, Henry, whispered Jack. Are you okay? Annie shouted from the treehouse. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He kept staring up at the pterodon. Jack, are you okay? Annie called. Jack looked up at Annie. He smiled. Thanks for saving my life, he said. That was really fun. Climb up, said Annie. Jack tried to stand. His legs were wobbly. He felt a bit dizzy. Hurry, shouted Annie. He's coming. Jack looked around. The Tyrannosaurus was heading straight toward him. Jack bolted to the ladder. He grabbed the sides and started up. Hurry, hurry, screamed Annie. Jack scrambled into the treehouse. He's coming toward the tree, Annie cried. Suddenly, Something slammed against the oak tree. The treehouse shook like a leaf. Jack and Annie tumbled into the books. Make a wish, cried Annie. We need the book. The one with the picture of Frog Creek, said Jack. Where is it? He pushed some books aside. He had to find that book about Pennsylvania. There it was. He grabbed it and tore through it, looking for the photograph of the Frog Creek woods. He found it. Jack pointed to the picture. I wish we could go home, he shouted. The wind began to moan, softly at first. Hurry, Jack yelled. The wind picked up. It was whistling now. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Jack closed his eyes. He held on tightly to Annie. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter 10 
home before dark. A bird began to sing. Jack opened his eyes. He was still pointing at the picture of the Frog Creek Woods. He peeked out the treehouse window. Outside, he saw the exact same view. We're home, whispered Annie. The woods were lit with a golden late afternoon sunlight. The sun was about to set. No time had passed since they'd left. Jack! Annie! A voice called in the, from the distance. That's Mom, said Annie, pointing. Jack saw their mother far away. She was standing in front of their house. She looked very tiny. Annie! Jack! She called. Annie stuck her head out the window and shouted, Coming! Jack felt, still felt dazed. He just stared at Annie. What happened to us? He said. We took a trip in a magic treehouse, said Annie simply. But it's the same time as when we left, said Jack. Annie shrugged. And how did it take us so far away, said Jack, and so long ago? You just looked at a book and said you wished you could go there, said Annie, and the magic treehouse took us there. But how, said Jack, and who built this magic treehouse? Who put all these books here? A magic person, I guess, said Annie. A magic person? Oh, look, said Jack, I almost forgot about this. He reached into his pocket and pulled out the gold medallion. Someone lost this back there, in dinosaur land. Look, there's a letter M on it. Annie's eyes got round. You think M stands for magic person, she said? I don't know, said Jack. I just know someone went to that place before us. Jack! Annie! Came the distant cry again. Annie poked her head out the window. Coming, she shouted. Jack put the gold medallion back in his pocket. He pulled the dinosaur book out of his pack and put it back with all the other books. Then he and Annie took one last look around the treehouse. Goodbye, house, whispered Annie. Jack slung his backpack over his shoulder. He pointed at the ladder. Annie started down. Jack followed. Seconds later, they hopped onto the ground and started walking out of the woods. No one's going to believe our story, said Jack. So let's not tell anyone, said Annie. Dad won't believe it, said Jack. He'll say it was a dream, said Annie. Mom won't believe it, said Jack. She'll say it was pretend. My teacher won't believe it, said Jack. She'll say you're nuts, said Annie. We better not tell anyone, said Jack. I already said that said Annie. Jack sighed. I think I'm starting to not believe it myself, he said. They left the woods and started up the road to their house. As they walked past all the houses on their street, the trip to dinosaur time did seem more and more like a dream. Only this world and this time seemed real. Jack reached into his pocket. He clasped the gold medallion. He felt the engraving of the letter M. It made his fingers tingle. Jack laughed. Suddenly, he felt very happy. He couldn't explain what happened today, but he knew for sure that their trip in the magic treehouse had been real. Absolutely real. Tomorrow, Jack said softly, we'll go back to the woods. Of course, said Annie. And we'll climb up to the treehouse, said Jack. Of course, said Annie. And we'll see what happens next, said Jack. Of course, said Annie. Race you. And they took off together, running for home. That is the end of Dinosaurs Before Dark, the first book in the Magic Treehouse series by Mary Pope Osborne. If you want to take the AR test, it's AR test number 6311, and it's worth one point.